Since I peaked at 10 years old, I have decided to rewatch some of my favourite TV shows from when I was a kid. I have a lot of favourite TV shows, as I had no friends and full access to the TV at all times. So not much has changed since then. I can now legally drive, I guess. Now I, I need an excuse to still be watching Disney Channel as someone who's over the age of 16. So I made a YouTube video about what I'm watching. Today we are watching Ant Farm, starring Ch China Ann McLean, who is also in Wizards of Waverly Place as an angel, and in Descendants, but I haven't got to the movie that she's in yet. Advanced Natural Talents, or The Ant Farm for short. The Ant Farm is a school program for the gifted and talented kids in middle schools. These children are so extraordinary. They are skipping straight to high school. This is China. It's her first day in the Ant Program. She walks in and is met by this guy called Gibson. Welcome to the Ant Farm! Who says he does not have a degree, so he can't be her teacher. But he is the tutor, guidance counsellor, and the therapist. You need a degree for two of those three things. Her dad is still in the room. I would question how advanced the ant farm is if they are just giving anyone a job. I know what you're thinking. Kelby, you're being too harsh. Not everyone needs a degree to be smart, which is true. But this man did pull licorice out of his head, so I feel free to judge him. Tyra's mum walks in and says she's a child's entertainer. That's why she is dressed the way she is. Gibson tells her to save a date in January for him. This man does not have children. This is their first interaction. I would have marked my child out of there personally. They let her stay. Moving on from the creep, not teach. He starts introducing China to the other students. This is Angus. He's a computer genius. China goes over to his desk, presses a button, and accidentally launches a nuke. This 11 year old has access to nukes. This is meant to be a school for prodigies, not a school for future prisoners. Next, a child drops from the ceiling, and this boy, Fletcher, is carrying around a life size recreation of his classmate. You know, just normal things. If I was China, I would have left by now. This is the first five minutes, it's only gonna get weirder. This is Olive. She has a perfect memory and remembers everything. Fletcher here is good at art. They are going to be China's best friends for the rest of the show. After all the introductions, they all go to their first class. Angus gets swept away in the sea of large children because who would have guessed that having these tiny children versus these massive people would it end well we don't see him until the end of the episode he, he just disappears no one questions where he went they all go to the first class which is a music class and that is where they meet lexi who throws china on the floor for sitting in her seat lexi is meant to be 15 in season one and she is bullying this 11 year old she did not even ask her to get out of her seat she chose to go straight to violence against this preteen. They leave class and they have to hide in the lockers to avoid getting trampled on by the big kids because, you know, put in a bunch of 4 foot 11 year olds in the same school as 6 foot 18 year olds is a great idea. Olive and China overhear Lexi's plans to throw a party at her house and China suggests that they go. Olive tells her it's an awful idea, which I agree with. Why would you want to go to the party of someone who publicly embarrassed you? China said it's fine as long as they look older. This is how Olive and Fletcher came dressed. I have so many questions, but no, you guys still look 11. China's dad decides to come in early and sees these two standing here, dressed like this. This has to be strike three of weirdness to him, no? First, these man pulls licorice out of his hair. Secondly, he makes a very weird invitation to your wife. And thirdly, you come home to your daughter's classmates dressed like this. I would have been like, hmm, maybe I'm pulling you out. But there's still time for you to be normal. Fletcher has a great idea of using the wax figures to help him sneak out. How has he made a full wax figure of China? He met her that day. When did he have time to make her one? A lot of kids TV shows that do this thing where they think, oh, having creepy crushes is so funny. Um, no, it's just creepy. It's just creepy. Moving on to the party. They they go there and embarrass themselves multiple times. Olive drinks a soda and then acts high for the rest of the party. At some point, a soda shenanigans calls her to knock over the sound system. It was entirely Olive's fault for choosing to drink that drink. And somehow both her and Fletcher blame China because she told them to go to the party. She didn't tell you to act like a fool. How was that her fault? To save the day, China starts singing and saves the party until China's dad shows up with Gibson. Is it a normal thing for teachers to show up at your house? Because they always do this in American TV shows. In the UK, that would be weird. 
if I open my door and Miss Trunchbull was at my front door, I would scream. Why did the teacher know where you live? But like, teachers know my name. After discovering they snuck out because the wax figure melted because they left it in direct light. She gets grounded. Shocking. You just grounded her? She's 11. Angus had to get surgery after being trampled by the big kid, by the big kid. <laughs> This, along with the child dropping from the ceiling, and the children that got mauled by a tiger, how has the ant program not been shut down? After this, I watched a few more episodes, other than the first one. In episode 26 of season one, they reveal Gibson brought a tiger to school, and it mauled several of the children, and the only consequence for that was that pets were banned from the ant program. That's just how tigers show affection by mauling children. <laughs> but after season two, he only appears four times and halfway through season two, he stops appearing and we never see him again. I would like to know what finally got him fired. If getting children mauled was not a nail in the coffin for his teaching career, or should I say his tutor, therapist and counselor career, what was, what did he have to do? Did he blow up the school? Because I feel like getting several children mauled really should have been the end. So what did he do? Also, Miss Briggs from iCarly appears in this show, but she's the principal. Congrats on the promotion. Principal Skidmore revealed several episodes in that the only reason she made the ant farm was so she could exploit the children's gift. In episode three, she chooses Fletcher to paint her portrait. Oh, and uh, the portrait is not for the hallway. It's a birthday present for my gentleman friend. <laughs> and in the beginning of season two, she makes all the ants watch her nephew because she's too lazy to do it. Trust me. My sister didn't give birth to any prodigy. <laughs> oh, she's so dumb, she entrusted me with the safety of a child. <laughs> Skipping to season three of the show, you know how I mentioned Angus and how future criminal? Angus finally gets caught hacking into something and the ant program is bought by this tech billionaire in the final season. In the last episode, this man makes them work as unpaid child labour and he says it's okay because none of them are 16 so he can't pay them. See, this is all Angus's fault. I told you in episode one, not to trust that kid. This TV show had one of my favourite Disney intro songs, Just Behind Wizards and That's a Raven. Antoine has some great songs throughout this series but the most famous is Calling All The Monsters, which Chan and McLean still references to this day because she should. It's an amazing song. I would die for this song. I noticed while watching some of the episodes that the writer of this show tried to use the word ant, tried to use words that contained the word ant as the name for each episode. They had transplanted, participant, and phantom. They only got three episodes in before they ran out of words that contained the word ant naturally in them. The following two episodes, they just crammed the word ant in there. Sci and Ants Fair. That was in season one. They ran out of words very quickly. They got three episodes. I remember when I was a kid, I really wanted to join the ant farm. Now that I'm older, I would not. The fact that the one responsible for my life and safety would have been Gibson, who has famous quotes such as, Hey Lexi, I was downstairs feeding the rat, like I do every Wednesday. And does this llama's bike look infected? And that man would have been in charge of my safety. One thing that did slightly annoy me whilst writing for the show, China, the character, is spelled C Y. And A. The actress, China Ann McLean, who plays the character, is spelt the way of the country. Why? They could have just done it the way her name was. They clearly named the character after her. They were like, no, no, no. We're going to be quirky today. We're going to be different. It was unnecessary. Whilst watching the show, I know there's nothing particularly special about the ant program. It's just a bunch of 11 year olds in a high school. At no point do they have special educators. They have Gibson. They at no point refine any of their skills. Additionally, I can understand why Angus and Olive are in the high school classes because their talents are academic but China and Fletcher are talented in the art. How are these two academically regular children meant to keep up with a bunch of 16 year olds? Not only are these children not getting a proper education, it is revealed in the student council episode that the ant who is on the student council gets shot out of a cannon and is forced to be a disco ball at the school dance. What benefits are these children getting to be in here? Because right now it just seems like negative. Getting to be in a cool program is isn't worth it if you're traumatised. After rewatching that farm, I can see why I liked it as a kid. It's still funny. Certain shows don't hold up when you rewatch them when you're older. I recently tried to do a video on the Horrid Henry movie. It was so painfully boring. I think I got 10 minutes in and I couldn't take anymore. That movie and this show came out at around the same time. Yet yeah, this was watchable <laughs> and the Horrid Henry movie was not. So I would like to commend Ant Farm for standing the test of time. Also, I have a one final question. What happens when they do turn high school age? 
because either one, two and three, they're too young. But when they turn 15, do they go to college? Or are they in high school for eight years? That's all for this video. Leave a like, subscribe. You know the thing, I don't know why I have to still- Why do I have to still take this? You've just been around for over a decade. Bye.